Today's topic is probabilistic analysis and randomized algorithms. In this first uh, scre screencast, I will show uh, some basic probabilistic analysis in which we analyze the expected runtime of an algorithm based on some assumptions about the distribution of the input. And then in a subsequent screencast, we'll look at the idea of randomized algorithms, which is where you deliberately randomize in some manner to simulate having completely random input that enables us to make uh, certain claims about our algorithms. And I will give an example of this using a special kind of list structure called skip lists. The image here is from uh, Haleakala Crater somewhere up above Paliku Cabin, one of the um, areas that my family has been hiking for many decades. The runtime of many algorithms can depend on the distribution of the data. We've seen an example with the insertion sort. We found that the uh, best case was when the data was already sorted and the time was theta of n. And the worst case was when it was reverse sorted and the time required to sort could be as bad as theta of n squared. But often these uh, best and worst cases are rare. And unusual. We're more interested in what is a typical case, what can be expected on average for the vast majority of, of the input data. And uh, with many algorithms, the time that it actually takes to run the algorithm will depend on the content of the input data and the distribution of, of the data, the possible inputs to the data. So that's going to require probabilistic analysis, which is reasoning about the runtime of algorithms based on what we know about the distribution of the possible inputs to the algorithm. But reasoning with probabilities can be very complicated. But we're going to see that we have a method called indicator random variables that makes this kind of analysis much easier. Indicator random variables let us analyze problems in terms of events for which we know the probabilities. Essentially they let us count the way that we find the easiest to count. For example, in sorting, the hard way to do the analysis would be to reason about what is the probability of one item being out of order, two items being out of order, three dot dot dot, k items being out of order, dot dot dot, all n. Uh, it's really hard to count that way. But we know, it's very easy to know, if you've got two items, the probability that they're not in order is one half. You know, either they're, it's you know, A and B, or it's B and A. So uh, that's a very easy probability to estimate. So indicator ram random variables will let us count knowing the easy way to count. So it's really important that you understand how indicator random variables work. Uh, they're going to be used throughout the course. So really spend some time understanding how these work in this section. Uh, I'm going to be using coin tosses and the expected number of inversions in a list of, of uh, keys as examples. The text has examples for the hiring problem, which you should read, sections 5.1 to 5.3, and the birthday paradox of section 541, which has very similar structure to the example I'm going to give here, and they also show how to do it the hard way, so you can appreciate how um, indicated random variables make things a little bit easier. Okay, you may want to review your basic probability before we get into this. Let's begin. And I want to remind you that my uh, screencast lectures roughly follow what I have in my web notes, uh, which I show an example of here. So after you've watched the screencast, you can then read through the web notes to see things written out uh, maybe more legibly and with more detail than I'm giving in the screencast. And then after that, you uh, definitely should read the, uh, the book chapter to get uh, further details. A random variable is a variable that will take on a range of values according to some probability distribution. We usually write random variables with an x. Then we're going to talk about the expected value of the random variable, which we will write it as e of x with square brackets. This is the average value we would observe if we sampled this random variable repeatedly. So we're going to do this using indicator random variables. 
And uh, indicated random variables are defined as follows. We write out one of the notations is I of A with uh, curly brackets, where uh, A is some event in the sample space S. We're asking, does event A occur? And an indicator random variable only has two values. One, if A occurs, and zero, if A does not occur. And so we're going to indicate a random variables because they take on the value of one or zero are very helpful for simplifying the um, algebra in the expressions we use to do probabilistic analysis. They let us break up the probability of the values of a random variable into pieces. We're off, you're often going to see us talking about x of i, where we're saying, um, you know, what's x of one, x of two. Um, We'll break up x into a number of possible cases, and then we're going to ask for the expected value of each of those cases, and we're going to try to do it in such a manner that these things correspond to the indicator random variables, and then things become easier to count. Okay, in our, our in probabilistic analysis, we're going to make considerable use of this lemma called lemma one. A lemma is uh, like a theorem, but it's a smaller statement that's used as a um, stepping stone or support for proving larger things. So let's define for an event A, we're going to use an alternate notation here. Let's define the random variable X of A to be the indicator random variable of A. The lemma 1 says that the expected value of x sub a is equal to simply, I always do that, simply the probability of a. And this, so this is going to let us replace expressions involving expected values with simple probabilities. Um, here's a proof. Let's say, um, let's just write this out expected value of x of a is equal to expected value of um, using this fact up here. This is just the definition of the notation. But i of a is 1 if a occurs and 0 if a does not. And a has some probability of occurring. So this expression is equal to 1 times the probability of A occurring plus 0 times the probability of A not occurring, which we'll write not A. But of course, 0 makes that term drop out, so it's just simply the probability of A. Super simple proof, but being able to say this will let us dramatically simplify expressions at crucial points in our analyses. Here's a super simple example with coin flipping, a single toss. The sample space, the space of possible events, is heads or tails. And the probability of heads, which is equal to the probability of tails, is 1 half. Okay. So let's compute the expected number of heads when flipping a fair coin once. Well, let's define an indicator random variable x of h, which is the random variable for the outcome of heads. And it's going to have the indicator random variable i of h. In other words, it's going to have value 1 when it comes up with heads and 0 when it comes up with tails. But uh, we already know that the uh, probability of heads is equal to 1 half. So by lemma 1, we can say directly the expected value of x of h is equal to the probability of h, which is 1 half. So that's a simple direct application of lemma 1. So what about the expected number of heads when you flip a fair coin n times? Well, let's let x be a random variable for the number of heads in n flips. And so we want to compute the expected value of x, which we write like this. Well, here's how to do it the hard way. 
I want you to really pay attention to what is going on here. Suppose we count it up for all possible number of heads. We'll have k be zero, you know, zero heads, one heads, two heads, three heads, and then we'll count. You know, if we got that many heads, we're going to count k. Say if it's five heads, the expected value is five. But we've got to multiply that by the probability of it having that value. Okay, so we can do it this way. This way we would have to compute the probability that out of n flips we get zero heads, out of n flips we get one heads, out of n flips we get two heads, all these different probabilities for different amounts. And uh, it's done with a binomial distribution. And I'm going to show you what it looks like, but I'm going to speed up here because part of the point here is you don't need to know this gory detail, but here is what it would look like. So we really don't want to have to do all that. We don't really even want to understand what all that was uh, if we can find a much easier way to count. Rather than counting the probability of there being one head, two head, three head, dot, 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 let's just count the thing we already know. We know the probability of a head on a given flip is one half. So let's figure out a way to divide this problem up differently so we can count the easy way. And this is going to be extremely important throughout this course that there's going to be many situations where if you count the hard way it's just mind-boggling and you just got to rethink it and count the easy way and an indicator and indicator and the variables are a way to do this so this is the wrong way to count let's get rid of this in fact let's start over we, we're going to need a little bit more background here we're going to rely on an important property of expectations the expected value of the sum is equal to the sum of the expectations shown here in green. Now let's reconceptualize our coin flip problem. Rather than requiring that we know the probability of one, two, three, and flips, we're going to work with the probability that we already know, the probability of one flip. In order to do that we need to break up this big X into some little X's. Again this is crucial in any of this kind of analysis. So let's let x of i be an indicator random variable for the ith flip is head. And of course we know that the probability of any given flip being heads is one half. So this gives us a probability that's much easier to count with. So we want to find, we're trying to compute the overall x, the number of heads and n flips, and that's simply going to be the sum of k equals 1 to n x of i. Where here k is no longer the probability, is no longer counting the number of heads, but rather it's just indexing to which flip it is. Uh, so we're just going to count the flips individually and add them up. Lemma 1 says that the expected value, we already know the expected value of x of i is the probability of the event for which x of i is uh, an indicated random variable which is one half, and that's true for all of these i's. So we've already got the prob we, we, we can turn e's into probabilities into numbers for all of these events. And then we rely on the linearity of expre expectation to do this. So here comes the actual solution and compare this to what I just wrote out very quickly before. The expected value of x is the expected value of this thing here because x is equal to this thing here. It's expected value of this sum. Okay. But this is just 
an expanded version of this. Expected value of a sum is the sum of the expected individual values. So that means we can pull the summation out of this. And this is a move you're going to see all the time in these analyses. We're going to move that E inwards until it's wrapped around something small enough that we know how to replace with a number. So it's the sum of the expected values of the individual hit flips, which we already know. I just realized my notes say I instead of K, but I guess it doesn't matter. We're just adding up one half n times, which is equal to n over 2. And remember previously with that previous analysis, I end, came out with uh, NP. Well, P here is 1 half, so that was the same as n over 2. I was using a more general formula in that one that I did really fast. So I really want you to understand this very simple example. Of course, we know that in um, n flips, we expect n over 2 of them to come out heads. This is not a profound result. But this is showing the basic pattern of analysis using indicator random variables and how much easier it is than the other approach that I showed you when you when you try to count the wrong way. Indicator random variables let you count the easy way and this is a simple example. So just try to understand this really clearly. We're trying to find the expected value of some overall series of events and so what we do is we make an indicator indicator random variable for each component event and so that's equal to the expected value of the sum of those indicator random variables and the linearity of expectation lets us move that E inwards so we isolate the individual things for which we already have the probability and so we can just replace it and then we've gotten rid of all the E's and P's and it just becomes a simple expression that we can get an answer for. So make sure you're pretty clear on that. Well we will end this screencast here. In the next one I will work through a more complicated example the uh, related to sorting. We're going to look at the number of inversion, expect the number of inversions in a, a random input data of keys. And then after that, in a subsequent screencast, we'll get on to randomized algorithms, which is a completely different um, idea, yet strongly related to this one and the example using skip lists.